Hi everyone, I want to talk about miliary tuberculosis. You can check my channel for different topics on tuberculosis that are published before now. But for this moment, the focus will be on miliary TB. Miliary from millet like in appearance. And with that in mind, let's go. Miliary tuberculosis is a clinical tuberculosis disease from hematogenous or lymphatic spread of microbacterial tuberculosis. It's either from primary infection or elevation of a latent tuberculosis infection and wide dissemination. Miliary is a word from miller like appearance. Miliary TB could be extrapulmonary, that is when it's affecting other organs besides the lungs, like in the brain, in the central nervous system, and liver, spleen, and so on. Or it could be affecting the lungs and still appear like millet in appearance, forming miliary TB of the lungs. That is pulmonary form of miliary tuberculosis. Before we can understand miliary tuberculosis, we need to know that most of the times the affected individuals will come down with what is known as pulmonary tuberculosis you know, involving cough, sputum production, fever, night sweats, weight loss, and the rest. Then there will be extrapulmonary or disseminated tuberculosis that is beyond the lungs spreading through the blood or lymphatic system. Miliary tuberculosis could either be in the lungs, that is, it is miliary, but in the pulmonary system called pulmonary tuberculosis or outside the lungs. So it's still miliary tuberculosis, but extra pulmonary tuberculosis. And somebody is then confused, and what is miliary tuberculosis all about? Don't worry, in a bit you will get the complete picture. Miliary tuberculosis affects multiple organs. Miliary tuberculosis is just about 3% of all different forms of tuberculosis. Progression from primary focus. The primary focus is always in the lungs, that is primary tuberculosis. From there, the bacilli will spread through the lymphatic system to the brain or the liver, spleen, bone marrow, vascular organs, and so on. It is expected to heal by granulomatous encapsulation over weeks to months. The healed and latent foci can reactivate in years or decades after that. Still on progression, acute or generalized Miliary tuberculosis will have a rapid course. Cassating granulomatous reaction is the hallmark of acute miliary tuberculosis. And angiotic TB is an uncommon form of miliary TB without granulomatous formation. What are the possible risk factors for miliary tuberculosis? Number one, the age. Infants and young children will mostly have miliary tuberculosis. Comorbidities. HIV and other immunosuppressant agents. Immune compromised states. In children, it could be because of immature immunity and old adults because of waning immunity is increase in pregnancy, diabetes mellitus, chronic renal failure. Still on risk factors, corticosteroids used for a long period of time, tissue necrosis factor alpha blockers, disease modified arteriomatic drugs, chemotherapy, malignancy, and alcohol. Also, it appears that there's an uncertain relative increase amongst African Americans. What are the clinical features? The clinical features will include fever, night sweats, anorexia, weight loss, malaise, 
cough, particularly if it's affecting the pulmonary system, dyspnea, diuretic chest pain, gastrointestinal pain, nausea, meeting, diarrhea, headache, patomegaly, splenomegaly. Meningismus, ascites, jaundice, positive tuberculin skin test, adrenal failure, TB peritonitis, TB meningitis, TB laryngitis. The diagnosis is mostly mixed. And why that? Because the presentation will be non specific. Mostly diagnosed post mortem. And when you carry out autopsy on an HIV disease patient, you may make that diagnosis there as well. Okay, while working on living human beings, trying to make the diagnosis of miliary tuberculosis, you may or not have disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. Okay, but ESR, ALP, bilirubin may be raised and decreased red blood cell, white blood cell, or increased white blood cell with left shift, meaning there's a high number of mature cells. And this is usually found in infection or inflammation. When you assay, the sodium level might be dropped and otosat may be low and the platelets may be down, leading to bleeding. Pam's atopenia should raise our concern, okay? Because I've said decreased red blood cell, decreased white blood cell, decreased platelets, and we are talking about Pam's atopenia, and that should raise our concern for malaria TB. And why that? There's bone marrow infiltration. Still on possible laboratory diagnosis, you can do lumbar puncture and have the CSF as a for cells. You can have tissue biopsy and tuberculin skin test or interferon gamma release assay. You can have your AAFB, that is alcohol acid fast bacilli, nucleic acid amplification test, and of course HIV screening. Radiologically, if you have chest x ray done, if it's affecting the pulmonary system, you can have reticular nodular pattern of miliary TB throughout the lungs. It's going to appear like millets on the x ray. You know. It might be normal in up to half of the patient with mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is why I said initially the diagnosis you know, by radiology on it is somehow complex. CT will give a clearer picture and you can have. PET done, gallium scans. Endoscopy examination will be necessary because there's possibility of choroidal tubercles. What are the possible differential diagnoses? It could be pulmonary tuberculosis, could be non tuberculous microbacteria, could even be tumor metastasis, secondary to all those organs where it's going to find the miliary like uh, appearance of a millet. And could be histoplasmosis, could be all those uh, diseases that could form gallomatous situations, right? Plastomycosis, pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia in HIV positive patients, Legionella, mystacosis, brucellosis, and parasitic infection. Could be varicella, cytomegalovirus, could be flu from clinical appearance, measles, lymphoma, mesothelioma, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, and might be foreign body. When it comes to treatment, it's the same as treating pulmonary tuberculosis. And you can check my channel for TB treatment. I have published a presentation on that. But in addition to what you are going to get there, here, when it comes to miliary tuberculosis, when children and immunocompromised have miliary tuberculosis, we'll treat them for a longer period of time. Also, when there's miliary tuberculosis affecting the central nervous system, they'll be on medications for a long period of time. When there's smear culture and sensitivity, 
that will help in the face of multi-drug resistant strain. Prevention, that is the best. Let's prevent before getting into the trouble. Let's treat any identified latent tuberculosis infection. BCG at best in endemic regions of the world. Non-relenting treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis with DOT will help. You can check my video for that. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation, Miliary TB. You can now rewind, listen to it again, get yourself educated and educate others. Thanks for listening. Kindly remember to subscribe and share. I appreciate it. Thank you.